but he said we should leave. In the car, he lost it on me asking, what brain cell made you think it was a good idea to tell his mom that? I told him his mom kept pushing after I had already given her an answer. Still, he said this was the most fucked up shit he heard me say. I replied that I was just frustrated and didn't mean to hurt her feelings and cause issues. He argued that if I don't want issues, that I should just stop making shit difficult and say yes to his mom's request. He then ranted about how it's his son too, then said if his mom isn't allowed in there, then he won't be there too. Now, I don't really know if he really meant this or just said it in the heat of the moment, but it had me fuming. He's been ignoring me when I try to talk to him and act like I'm not in the room. I think I might have gone too far and created tension by responding inappropriately. So, am I the asshole? Oh my god, you poor baby. No, no one gets to tell you who gets to see you get all stitched up in there. No one, not even the baby daddy. Thong or a tiny crop top. Just a crop top, nothing else. Okay, see, you saved yourself. The title was a little fishy, but now I hear like I understand your concern. She even does this with complete strangers. One time, she opened the door for the delivery guy wearing only a see-through gown. You could see everything. Afterwards, I talked to her about it, and she was utterly confused as to why I felt uncomfortable. Then she laughed and told me to stop being jealous, baby. She even said that I'm unreasonable. We had another discussion about this yesterday, and I told her that she probably wouldn't feel comfortable if I did the same. She said that she doesn't understand why I care what her staff think, and that it never even crossed her mind that this is inappropriate. She told me that she only does this in the comfort of her home and not in front of actual people. An example, people that don't work for her. She got kind of mad at me and vented to her friends. According to all of them, I'm weird for having a problem with this and I'm an asshole for telling my girlfriend to cover up. Somehow, I'm the villain of the story. So, am I really the asshole here? This is why you need to watch out for the shy ones. I'm European and when I was 16, I attended a Catholic high school in the States. All of it was new to me and I felt like I was in a teen movie sometimes. Another new thing to me was having to change classes every hour. Where I'm from, you sit five hours at the same desk with the same people nearby and just the professors alternate every hour. I sat next to this guy named Mark in my English class. He was nice and friendly despite being introverted. It amazed me that whenever I talked to him, he never looked me in the eye. He would always look around or at the ground, often moving his eyes quickly. I assumed it was a way to combat his shyness. One morning, I sit next to Mark as usual and start talking. I asked him if I could copy his homework as I didn't finish the last part of mine and he kindly accepted. The next day, I noticed that Mark is absent. A few days go by and rumors start circulating in the hallways that poor Mark, on his way home, found his mother dead. Two weeks pass and the rumors start getting out of hand. Things like how his mother's head was in the oven or that she was robbed. Then one day, Mark came back to school and he seemed extremely sad. I put my arm around him in class and told him I'm sorry. This is when, for the first time ever, he looked me straight in the eye and thanked me. However, something about this was off. This is why you should be careful doing private events as a stripper. I worked as a dancer for a few years. Most nights, I worked at the club, but sometimes I did private events to make some extra money. I always took one of the bouncers that I knew from the club as my bodyguard and gave him a cut of what I made. I also only agreed to small events with a max of 10 to 15 people. One day, a guy called me and booked me for a small birthday party for his brother. I explained the rules. No touching or grabbing, nothing sexual would be happening, and I only do what I'm comfortable with, to which he said he understood. I picked up my bouncer friend Tank and headed out to the event. When we arrived, we immediately noticed it was a huge party of at least 60 to 70 people, all of them being men. Tank asked me if I was still comfortable dancing for the party and I agreed since we were already there. The group of men were really loud when I walked in and they were extremely intoxicated, which was the first red flag. A few guys instantly started touching me and Tank lightly pushed them away, telling them no touching and that the show hasn't started yet. While we were walking to the bathroom to change, another guy grabbed my butt. Tank pushed him off and started arguing with him. At this point, we should have left and if I knew what was about to go down, we would have. This is okay, but what if I went like this? on who you decide to meet up with on a dating app because you might just end up on a date with a narcissist. When I was in Denver, I ended up matching with a really hot 39-year-old who also happened to be a lawyer. I recently called off an engagement, so casually dating other people was kind of in the books for me. Before meeting him, I made sure I took all the usual precautions. We made it very, very clear what our boundaries were and said that there was no expectations. So, like, either of us could leave after a drink and it would be totally fine. Also, we made sure to FaceTime and he seemed super sweet, totally normal. However, the second we sat down, it seemed like he was on drugs. He would literally talk a million miles an hour about himself and wouldn't let me get a breath in. And the stuff he was bringing up was just odd. Like, he even included that he broke off an engagement, too. Hold on to that thought. Two drinks in, this man leans over and says, I've been diagnosed with bipolar and schizophrenic disorder, but I didn't want to talk about it over text. Because I don't know a whole lot about those mental disorders, I felt a little uncomfy. I also didn't feel like that was a first date topic. Then he literally starts joking about murdering me and states that he would use my dead body for face ID to text my friend that I'm safe so the timing is off for the investigation. Like for part two. Chelsea is back. She spilled more tea, of course, so stay till the end to hear all the gossip. As for the nails, if you remember from her last appointment, we did a gel -like set on her and I decided to not soak them off and do a fill with the same set. It's completely fine to do this, I personally prefer to not soak off. I filed and blended the remainder of the tip into her natural nail. 
and then just did my basic cuticle prep as usual. I strengthened the remainder of the extension with a hard gel and then went in with a color and design. So for the tea, Chelsea's hubby's ex-wife saw on Facebook through a mutual friend's profile that Chelsea's pregnant. Mind you, his ex always wanted kids and he always came up with some kind of excuse. She frantically starts calling him and shows up at his house like for a part two. Story time about my psychotic best friend. So we're going to call this girl Gia. So a little background information. This all happened whenever I was in ninth grade. I saw Gia sitting at this lunch table alone and I invited her to come sit with my friends and I. And after talking to her, I found out that she was a new student and she didn't have any friends. So her and I started hanging out and we became really close. Like she would come over my house 24-7. Well, my older sister was a grade above us and she would act really weird around her. And by weird, I mean like she would always make fun of me in front of my sister. And weirdly enough, try to cause problems between us. My sister didn't really like her. She thought that she was weird. But because she was my friend, she was being super nice to her. Well, like a month later, she started trying to become best friends with my sister. Like any conversation she would have, I would be like, oh, do you want to come over? She would be like, no, sorry, I'm hanging out with your sister today. And I would go home and I would be like, hey, are you hanging out with Gia today? And my sister would be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like for part two. Story time about how I was voted the ugliest girl in high school. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. That's when the boys came out with the list of the ugliest girls in high school. What they did was pass around some flyers with all the names on it, and then they had people write the number one ugliest girl on the list. As soon as I saw my name on the list, I wanted to die. I pretended I was sick and went home. There was this one girl who actually stood up for me and the rest of the girls, and she was actually one of the prettiest girls in the entire school. She told everyone to knock it off, but nobody listened to her. Instead, the boys added her to the list as well, but there was no way that she was going to get voted number one. I would show up every day to school that week wishing that I was dead. Finally, on Friday, they came out with a winner. And of course, everyone picked me. I was completely mortified, but I actually started laughing when I saw the list. It was like the stress from the entire week had finally accumulated, and my reaction was to just laugh. While they were all hoping that I was just going to break down and cry, I started to laugh in their faces. The teacher asked me what was wrong and I showed her the list. She ran over to the principal's office and everything became way too dramatic for me. So I literally decided to run away from school. When I got home, I told my parents everything. Part 3 is a... Uh... My daughter made me cry for the first time in my life. I, 28 female, have a 13-year-old daughter. I had her when I was 15 after I was raped by someone who I thought was my friend. My daughter doesn't know this and I decided not to tell her. Keep it in mind. Well, I also have a sister, 35 female. She's honestly the best sister I could ever ask for. Now for an explanation. I was picking my daughter up from school and she seemed like she was in a bad mood so I wanted to do something that would cheer her up. I asked her if she wanted to go to the mall or go out to the Chinese restaurant she loves. She told me no because my sister had promised to take her to the movies. So I told her I'd drive her to the movies. She then told me no again and to drop her off at my sister's house. So I agreed. Three hours later, she came home and was happier now. I asked if the movies were fun, but she just ignored me and went to her room instead. I thought this was weird because she normally always tells me how fun the movies are or whenever she goes somewhere with my sister. So I called her down for dinner and she came down and walked right past me to grab her jacket and shoes. Obviously confused, I asked her where she was going. She said she was going to get Mexican food with my sister. I told her I had already made dinner and she got this is a story time of why I dropped out of high school on my first day. And when I say my first day, I mean my first day of freshman year. After this, I never went back. So like I said, it was the first day of freshman year and I have extreme anxiety. My anxiety is literally so, so bad. I literally get anxiety just by waking up in the morning. So I was super anxious for my first day of high school. I literally was running around the school. I could not find my classes. I walked into the wrong classroom several times. It was so embarrassing. But then I finally made it to my first class i sat down in the front of the classroom bad idea after running around the school and not being able to find my classes and walking into different classes that i wasn't supposed to be in which was so embarrassing my stomach was literally in my ass my stomach was literally bubbling because of my anxiety i felt so much pressure in my stomach i needed to let some out and you know i thought i could get away with it you know a little silent fart you know it was silent but it was not a fart I shit my pants. Then the teacher says we're going to go around the classroom and everyone has to stand up and say one thing about ourselves. Starting with me since I was sitting at the front. Now this is what happened like for part two. So after Benny was literally acting possessed while I was sleeping in his room, I went to go open the note that his parents left that was only for emergencies. And guess what it said? <laughs> The note literally said, sorry for not telling you, run him a cold bath, and call 911 if anything happens. I didn't know what to do, so I just went to go wake up Benny. So when I woke Benny up, he was really, really mad, and he kept trying to put his hands in front of my eyes and was telling me, please be nice to them, open up. <laughs> 
And so long story short, I ran Benny cold bath and then he locked himself in the bathroom. So at this point, Benny has literally locked himself in the bathroom and he's literally yelling out loud, please take her, not me, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> so I called the police because I was scared for my life at this point. And the note that his parents left said to do that. So the cops tried calling Benny's parents, but they couldn't get a hold of them, but they got a hold of the grandparents. And eventually his grandparents came. So his grandparents come and they're like, we're gonna take him to a priest. And they told me to leave. This is why waking up late might just save your life. One day when I was in elementary school, my mom and I both overslept, which meant I wouldn't be ready in time to get on the bus. School started at eight, my bus pickup time was at seven and it was already 6.40 or something. I was still in my PJs and hadn't even had breakfast yet. My mom decided that today we would just tell the bus driver to go on ahead and she would take me to school, which would give me plenty of time to get ready. It's 6.50, I'm in my PJs, eating breakfast, and that's when we hear the bus pull up 10 minutes earlier than scheduled. My mom peeks her head out of the door into the foggy morning and waves the bus on. She closed the door and came back inside, but the bus didn't pull away. There's a knock at the door, and my mom opens it to find a man in a bus driver uniform. He explains he's a substitute bus driver because the regular driver called in sick and that he's early because he wanted to get an early start on the route. My mom says she's taking me to school because we woke up late. He gets visibly upset and says he can wait a few minutes since he's already ahead of schedule. My mom says that we won't be ready in a few minutes and tells him to go on ahead. He seemed really angry about this, but turned around, got back on the bus, and left. But at 7 a.m., another bus pulls up to my house. My mom went out to talk to them and came back looking terrified.